One of the biggest early criticisms of the Detroit Lions defense was that they couldn't generate any pressure or sacks on opposing offenses. However though, in last week's victory against the Atlanta Falcons, they were able to get seven sacks. In today's episode, we are going to be taking an in-depth look at each one of those sacks and how they were able to pull it off. Stay tuned everybody, it's about to get fun today. It started with an owner who had a last name fans despised. Hiring a coach that the experts thought was crazy. But I got a plan, I swear to you. Who traded for a QB that was said to be washed up. They said the Detroit Lions would never amount to anything. That it would always be the same old Lions. But this team, our team, has a new identity. Defined and expressed by the crazy head coach. Doesn't matter if you have one ass cheek and three toes, I will beat your ass. Led by the QB that nobody thought was good. Motor City Mania is in full swing and ready to start. So join the show and be prepared for kneecap biting. Because Motor City Mania starts right now. Hello everyone. And welcome back to yet another episode of MCM, Motor City Mania. I'm your host, David T. Pike, and we are diving in right now. As always, I just want to say welcome back to the channel. Thank you all for tuning into the show. And for those that are new to the channel, thank you all for deciding to watch my content. I just want to say... Hey, thank you all for your support. Thank you all for your patronage. Thank you all for your view. Hopefully you guys, hopefully you decide to subscribe to the channel. And with that, I just want to say God bless. Thank you all for what you do. And let's dive into the content. Now, here's the thing, folks. As I said in my intro, one of the biggest criticisms that the Lions defense had over the first two weeks was pretty much this problem of, okay, the Lions are not generating the sacks that we're expecting them to see. They had no problem getting pressure, necessarily, at least on the quarterback. But the problem was is that for all the pressure that we were, you know, getting, we were not getting the sacks. Because, again, through the first two weeks, as we already are well aware of, the Lions only had one sack between those two games. And that was not from one of our edge rushers. It wasn't from one of our linemen. It was from a linebacker, Alex Anzalone. And that sack, more than anything, was a coverage sack because it took 13 seconds for that sack to actually be, actually be gotten. So if you think about it, from the time the ball was snapped to the time we got freaking Geno Smith on the ground, that was 13 seconds. Now, I've already brought this up before. 13 seconds might as well be a millennia in terms of football plays because most football plays are literally about a third of that length in terms of total seconds, like three, maybe four seconds. You very seldom are going to have a play that goes much longer than that, and almost no plays go for freaking 13 seconds. That's just absolutely bewildering to think that a play could go that freaking long. But... We're not here to talk about the past. We're here to talk primarily about what has happened recently in the sense of, okay, you have the first two weeks where the Lions are not able to get any sacks at all, except for one. And then all of a sudden, you go from one sack in two weeks, and then you get seven sacks in one game from six different players. That's a pretty interesting jump right there. Like, okay, you go from one and two to seven in one game between six different players. I'm kind of a little bit curious to be like, okay, what did y'all do differently? Like, what was different if anything was different? Because that's one of my main things is like, okay, you go from one sack to seven sacks in the, in the course of one game. There's something I want to know. I want to know what's going on here. I want to see what potentially was different into, you know, the whole thing of how the Lions were able to feast on the Falcons for seven sacks. So that's what we're doing in today's episode here. So I'm literally going to be breaking down every single sack from that Falcons game that we had and pretty much showing you all what I think was the main reason why the Lions were able to get those sacks. Sound fun? Let's dive into it. So we're going to be literally going in these in literal numeric order. So from the first sack all the way down to the last one, and, and, and how should I say, in the order of how they actually have it, how they actually happened in game. So here's the first sack. As I'm going to show you it all go through, here's what, here's what we see really quickly before as I start running the whole thing through. You have four down linemen. You have three linebackers. What you're going to see is you're going to see that Brian Branch is in the box as a joker role. The Falcons decide to run a play-action play here. This play, however, is just pretty much, if you want to talk about it as far as who makes the sack, this was done by Benito Jones. 
And if you look at this, this is all pure effort. Like this is just an absolute, just great Herculean effort by Benito Jones. Because what you're going to see here, now that I've run the playthrough a couple of times as far as full speed, I want to show you guys the backside of this and slow it down so that way you guys can see a little bit better what I'm trying to demonstrate here. Watch what Benito Jones does here. He does an absolutely perfect, beautiful swim move to where he can get into the backfield. Like he literally gets the one hand behind the up uh, behind the offense of line he rips his arm over to get that swim move he's in the backfield and absolutely makes a beautiful quick sack again this is what you call a player doing exactly what they're supposed to do they go out there they execute their technique perfectly they make a great individual effort they get the play done this is what I want to see. This is what we need to see. And this is what Dan Campbell was specifically referring to somewhat in the in the week prior to the Atlanta Falcons game about how it's like, hey, we want to see guys that are actually going out there and they're giving more that we expect from them. We want to see them actually win those one-on-one -on -one matchups. We want to see our more you know consistent players making those consistent plays. Now, granted, let's be fair here. Benito Jones is not known for being a sack master. He's not known as a guy that's going to get a pass rush normally. But... The fact of the matter is, is that he was able to step up, he was able to execute a play, a technique perfectly, got the sack, and pretty much at that point, the ball's already rolling. It's like, okay, it's early in the game, we've already got one sack, let's start stacking on top of that, let's get some more. Without further ado, let's then get into the next sack, which, oh, coincidentally, if you think about it, you go back to that game, Benito Jones had the first sack. What happens? The very next play, the Lions stack another one on top of them. Again, let's take a look at it as the play goes through. You got four down linemen. Now, what you're going to see here is because of the previous sack, the defensive backfield is further back deep because they want to make sure that the pass doesn't potentially uh, beat them over the top. But I want you all to see what happens here. Again, Take a particular notion to Aiden Hutchinson. Hutchinson uses his hands to swipe the left guard and he goes inside. Well, what happens is, is when he does that, he pressures Ritter to where Ritter starts moving off his spot because he's feeling the pressure and he's trying to roll back the other way so that way he can potentially extend the play. Well, what happens? Derek Barnes is coming in around the other side, kind of behind, you know, freaking Ritter as he's trying to get away, and Barnes just comes up out of nowhere and gets him before he can escape. Again, what you're seeing here is Aiden Hutchinson taking good execution of his technique to get pressure inside, get Desmond Ritter off of his spot, and then another guy comes in and is able to finish the play and stop the offense from getting anywhere. And if I recall correctly, by the time that play was over, they had gone from like second and 10 all the way down to fourth and 28. Like it was absolutely bewildering how fast they were able to go from manageable down and distance to where it was like, okay, we're at fourth and a mile at this point. But again, so far, what we're seeing is execution of great technique from both of the, from some of the players that are in the plays and just good overall effort. We're not seeing anything crazy as far as stunts. We're not seeing anything crazy as far as uh, game planning. It's just like, listen, the players are just going out there. They're, they're, they're doing their technique to perfection, and the other players or the same player is making a great effort to get that sack. So that's the, through the first two sacks right there. Now, like I said, that was sack one and two. Now we're going to get to sack number three. Now, in this particular play, I'm going to start us off, and pretty much we're just going to look at this from the backfield view camera. So since we're looking at the defense, I want you all to pay attention here. You're going to have three down linemen. One guy, you're going to have, uh, you're going to have Aiden Hutchinson, you're going to have linebacker Jack Campbell on the edge. So you have three down linemen, and then you got the edge rusher. So it looks like you got five guys that are coming. So what happens? The ball is snapped. Now, what I want to do here is, after this is run through a few times, I want to show this in slow motion so that way you guys can actually see this. But as what I'm about to show here in the slow motion is, take a look at what Aline McNeil does, because this was McNeil's sack. Aline McNeil makes an absolutely just great inside push. And in the, in the, just put it simply, the right guard of the Atlanta Falcons, he simply cannot keep up or get any sort of a solid block against Ali McNeil. This is part of the reason why Ali McNeil has the nickname of Twinkle Tolls. Not only is this dude very strong, but he is very fast on his feet. But what happens? McNeil just keeps coming and coming and coming, and he gets the sack on freaking Ritter, and Ritter at the same time is again being pressured by Aiden Hutchinson. But the point of the matter is, is that because of Ali McNeil's tremendous strength and how fast he is, again, putting in that great effort, 
you're seeing that Ali McNeil was able to get in the backfield. Now, to be fair, he also didn't really have much opposition from the right guard, but I'm not going to take that away from Ali McNeil's strength and speed. But the point of the matter is, great effort, bad blocking. You you put those two together, you're definitely going to get a sack. And again, that's exactly what happened there. Again, another great individual effort paired with the fact that another person was helping them out to help get that sack. But again, no crazy stunts, no crazy game planning. It's just like, listen, you have an individual effort out there who's getting help from a teammate on the other side, and it literally just all comes together in perfect synchronization. So that was sack number three. Now, let's get to sack number four. Sack number four was the one that ended the half with Jack Campbell. So you guys all should be pretty well aware with this one. But again, let's take a look at the play as it starts to run through here. Okay, what you can see here, this is the last play before the half. You have Harris, Kaminsky, and Hutch that are on the line. You have three down linemen. Well, I want you guys to pay attention here. As the play starts rolling through, you can literally see Jack Campbell starts creeping up behind Aiden Hutchinson, pretty much signifying that he's about to blitz. But what you are going to see here is that the Lions are actually going to bring five blitzers in terms of trying to get pressure on Ritter because they're going to bring Hutch, Harris, and Kaminsky on the actual line. And then Campbell and Anzalone are also going to blitz from the linebacking position to get a much to get a much further, how should I say, amplified pressure on Ritter. Well, what happens here? As Campbell and Anzalone both blitz, Campbell engages the right guard. He actually gets a good shove into this right guard and is able to actually kind of bump him back a little bit. But pay attention to what Charles Harris and Aiden Hutchinson are doing. What they do is they pinch the edges. And I'm going to try and put this in a, in, a, in a still frame so you guys can see what I'm about to tell you here. As they're pinching the edges, Desmond Ritter then decides to step up and he tries to do a front door escape. That's what it's called in quarterbacking. If Okay, you're getting pinched from the edge, you step up into the pocket, you take the front door and you try and escape out that way. Well, here's the thing. As he's trying to take the front door escape, Jack Campbell gets off of his block and is able to get, again, another good effort to actually get the freaking quarterback down to the ground. Now, to be fair, this is some game planning. This is some scheming. Okay, you got three down linemen. You got two linebackers. You're bringing an extra man into blitz to get extra pressure. You're able to pinch the edge so that way the quarterback can't just all of a sudden just bow outside. He has to step back up into the pocket, into the defender's lap, which means they have a better chance to get the quarterback. So this is actually good game planning. This is actually good scheming. This is a kind of stunt that the defense actually ran to kind of end the to end the half because rather than going to a prevent defense and just trying to hope and pray that the quarterback throws it up and he gets picked off or knocked down, they brought the pressure to actually make sure that Ritter could not get it off and they were making sure that the defense could actually get him down to the ground, which is exactly what happened. Jack Campbell gets him down to the ground with a synchronized pressure from Harrison Hunt. Touch, boom, end of the half, we go to the locker room. So, that's sack number four. Now, sack number five. We're a little bit later in the game. I think we're in third quarter at this point. Might be the beginning of the fourth quarter. Either way, in this particular play, we've got five down linemen, all of them engaged. So again, we're bringing added men to try and bring pressure on Desmond Ritter here. Now, pay attention really quickly here. Take a look at Charles Harris on the backside. He engages with the freaking Falcons fullback. He then dips under, like he makes a nice dip rip under move to try and get underneath the fullback. Because again, as the saying goes in football, low man wins. It doesn't matter if it's in tackling, doesn't matter if it's in pass rush, low man wins. So as he gets underneath the block, he then gets the sack because, again, he's giving great effort to get around that blocker, get underneath the block, so then that way he can get the quarterback. Now, to be fair, again, this is a bit of scheming. This is a bit of game planning. You're bringing five guys, so you're getting more pressure on the quarterback. But also, pay attention here. Harris does take an extra second or so before he can get to Ritter. So this is also partially a coverage sack because the quarterback is trying to get rid of the ball as fast as he can, especially when he's got five guys that are coming at him. The whole point and the purpose of a quarterback's job is to have an internal clock in their head and say, okay, one Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi. By the time you get to that three Mississippi, that ball should be out of your hand or you should be starting to scramble. So what you're going to see here, as I show the still frame, is pretty much that the reason why you take a look at this, everybody is covered. 
And by the time that pretty much Ritter figures out that everyone's covered, Harris is literally right on his back doorstep about to pretty much plant him in the ground, which is exactly what happens. So again, great coverage sack, good game planning, good scheming, but also great individual effort by Charles Harris. And again, it's everybody doing their job. This is also something that Dan Campbell has said before as well. He's like, listen, when everybody does their job, we're all allowed to feast. And at this point, we're up to five sacks, but we still got two more to go. And you all already know who's gotten who gets these last two sacks so let's without further ado let's get into the rat killing as they would say now trying to make sure i've got everything yep here we go so here's sack number six when you take a look at this <laughs> sorry i was trying to put up the other hand and was busy so we're up to sack number six now in this particular play, again, we're going to be looking at this from the backfield view. The Lions have three down linemen. And again, you're going to have Jack Campbell as one edge rusher, and you're going to have Aiden Hutchinson as another edge rusher. I'm going to say this right now. The fact that the Lions are using Campbell as a bit of an edge rusher, that's something that I'm really, really intrigued by because that's not something we were thinking that he was going to be used as. But even Dan Campbell said that Jack Campbell has the ability to be used in multiple facets to help the defense. And it's like, listen, if Jack Campbell Campbell can be a, blit a blitzing linebacker off the edge, that just adds further value to his ability to be used in the defense, but a little bit on that later. Anyway, Hutch and Campbell, edge rushers, three down linemen, and you also have John Kaminsky and Romeo that are on this line as well. So again, what do you have? You've got Anzalone and Barnes are the linebackers. Now, as the play is rolling through here, what you're going to notice is, again, this is not necessarily anything to do with scheming. This is everything to do with just a pure dominating effort. I want you all to pay attention here as I put this in slow motion really quickly. Notice what Hutch does as he comes in to get the sack. He pulls off his best Dwight Freeney impersonation with this great inside spin move to take down Ritter. And again, I want you to pay attention to Hutchinson's arms. Notice his left arm here as it's going through the slow motion. He uses his left arm to swat down the left tackle's arms and then uses his right arm after that to set the spin move so that way he can get back. This is perfect technique execution by Aiden Hutchinson. Left arm to swipe it down, right arm to get on the backside of the tackle, use the forward momentum to spring into the freaking quarterback. This is great, great execution right here. This is why I'm saying this is a Dwight Freeney impersonation because one of the moves that Dwight Freeney of the Colts was very, very well known for was that spin move. He was lethal with it. Now granted, not necessarily the same thing for Aiden Hutchinson, but one thing we do know about Hutchinson is he has multiple moves in his arsenal to get to the quarterback, whether it's the rip move, whether it's the swim move, whether it's the spin. He has all these different things. And kind of setting up the next one here, here's the final sack, is the bull rush. So again, kind of giving it away a little bit here, but let's take a look at the last one. So again, we've got four guys that are down on the line of scrimmage here, but I want you all to pay attention here. Notice how three of these guys out of the four, they're in their two-point stances, which is Hutch, Jack Campbell again, and Charles Harris. The actual only guy that's in down three-point stance is John Kaminsky. But again, this is just great absolute individual effort by Aiden Hutchinson. Aiden Hutchinson, as I just stated, he just straight up bull rushes the left guard. And he has this guard has absolutely no chance of really stopping him. Because what happens is Hutch uses his right arm to kind of extend into the guard's chest level to kind of get a little bit of leverage. He then uses his other arm to get underneath and behind the guard to then sack Desmond Ritter, which also results in a strip sack and a forced fumble fumble recovery. So again, this is just a great individual effort by Aiden Hutchinson. There's just no other way to put this. He gets into the guard's grill, pretty much just forces him back, uses his arm to get a little bit of an extension, gets underneath the guard, gets back, sacks Ritter, strip sacks him, and gets the fumble recovery as well. Like, dude, that's just Aiden Hutchinson just putting it all out on the line right there. And that's what you want to see. Now, those are all the sacks. Here's what I'm going to say. This is why I this is what I believe personally when I take a look at all those sacks. Number one, great, great individual effort for pretty much everybody that, that got the sacks. Didn't matter if it was Benito Jones, Ali McNeil, Derek Barnes, Hutchinson, Jack Campbell. Didn't matter who it was. All gave great individual effort to actually get the sack. But we also saw something else. Teammates that were also helping out other said teammate that was getting the sack with some sort of synchronized pressure, making sure that that quarterback didn't get outside so that way the other person could go and get the sack. Again, good teammates that are helping others feast. So that's something else. 
But in at least two of the sacks that we saw, we also saw good game planning and scheming from the defense so that way they could utilize them they could utilize the pressure and they could utilize multiple stunts or fronts to try and get to Ritter as well. So again, what you're seeing is a conglomerate use of multiple things to get after that quarterback. So again, it's not just one of all different things. There is stunts, there is pressure, there's also individual effort, there's good teammates working together. This is what you want to see. You don't necessarily want to see one of everything. For, you don't want to see, how do I see this? One thing being utilized for every part of an episode or every part of a certain thing. You want to see multiple different things being used. And that's what we see here with all of these sacks that the Lions got against the Falcons. Now, as I said in my previous episode prior to the whole game against the Falcons, I said that the Lions were going to have a really good shot to get after the freaking Falcons quarterback because, one, Ritter's not experienced, but also, two, the Atlanta Falcons offensive line is not good at pass blocking. And when you take a look at these plays, you can clearly see that because of the effort and the synchronization that the Lions players had with one another, they were able to take advantage of the weakness of the Atlanta Falcons pass blocking to get those sacks. So, again, it's all this kind of stuff just working together here. So, as I have now presented the evidence, I presented the video evidence, the video analysis and breakdown. I'd like to hear what you guys' thoughts are on this. Do you agree with my analysis? Do you not agree with it? Whatever way you go about it, please be respectful. That's all I ask. And with that having been said, I just want to say thank you all for watching yet another episode of MCM, Motor City Mania. If you like what you saw, by all means, I highly encourage you all to do one of these three things, or hell, do all three of them even better. Like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. If by chance you subscribed in the past and you forgot to do so at the time, or you've just subscribed and you've not yet had a chance to do so, I highly encourage you all, please, 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 make sure you hit that bell notification, bell notification icon at the bottom so that way you never miss any more content that I push out. Again, we're getting more subscribers back to the channel from my previous one. Let's keep, in, let's keep getting that subscriber count out. Let's keep... Let's keep getting more people turning that bell notification icon on. And the best way to do that, as I'm about to say, please make sure you share this content with your Lions friends and family members. Share it here on YouTube. Share it on Twitter. Share it on Facebook. Share it anywhere and everywhere you can with anybody and everybody you can. So that way we can keep the channel growing. And with that having been said, folks, I just want to again say thank you all for tuning into the show. Thank you all for your view, your support, your patronage. Please keep coming back for more. Please let's keep getting more people into the channel. And with that having been said, I just want to say God bless. Thank you all for what you do. And until the next time that we meet, I'll see you all in the next episode.